Any introduction to uh, astronomy always involves um, a description of the celestial sphere and how you can use this concept in order to locate the position of objects in space. So to start off with, uh, let's do something that's a bit more familiar, which is using longitude and latitude here on Earth. So as a little refresher, imagine this sphere is the Earth, and it has a North Pole and it has a South Pole, and this green line going around here is the equator, and that equator represents a line of zero latitude. There's also lines that go from the North Pole to the South Pole. Those are lines of longitude. So we have a number of lines of longitude that are extending around the Earth. We also have different lines of latitude that kind of make a series of concentric circles about the Earth getting smaller, smaller, smaller until I reach one pole or the other pole. Now there's a special line of longitude that goes from the North Pole through the observatory at Greenwich in London and comes down here to the South Pole. This is a line of zero longitude. We call that the prime meridian. And any place on Earth can be located with a pair of coordinates, latitude and longitude. So for instance, Mountain View, where I teach, has a latitude of about 37.4 degrees north. It has a longitude of 122 degrees west. Now you might wonder why do they use uh, the terminology of degrees for longitude and latitude? Well, we use that terminology because in fact, longitude and latitude are actually angles. And I'd like to demonstrate that by taking my little globe apart here for a second. And, say, and I want you to imagine there is a sort of a ray represented by this nail that extends from the center of the Earth out to the equator, and it kind of comes out of the equator at zero longitude. And if I want to know what Mountain View's longitude is, what I want to do is I want to figure out the angle that this ray makes with another ray that goes through the line of longitude for Mountain View. So this angle here is about 122 degrees, so we say that's the longitude of Mountain View. Similarly, if I have another ray that goes through the equator and it can be moved up a line of longitude to a desired latitude, this angle here is going to be the latitude of the location on the Earth. And for Mountain View, the angle from here to here is 37.4 degrees. Now we can say 37.4 degrees north for the northern hemisphere. We can have a south latitude for the southern uh, locations in the southern hemisphere. But another way of doing it is just to use algebraic sign. We generally make north latitudes positive and south latitudes negative. We normally make east longitudes positive longitudes and west longitudes, negative longitudes. So alternatively, I could say the coordinates of Mountain View on the surface are plus 37.4 degrees and of, of latitude and minus 122 degrees of longitude. Now how we locate things in the sky is very, very similar to this. And we use a concept known as the celestial sphere. So imagine that this plastic globe here is no longer the Earth, but it represents this huge sphere that completely surrounds the Earth in such a way that the center of this sphere is at the same point as the center of the Earth. So the Earth is here in the middle of this celestial sphere. And we can put lines of latitude and longitude on the celestial sphere itself, and we call lines of latitude on the celestial sphere we call them lines of declination, D-E-C-L-I-N-A-T-I-O-N. -E and we call the lines of longitude that are sort of drawn on the celestial sphere lines of right ascension. And uh, that's two words, R-I-G-H-T-A-S-C-E-N-T-I-O-N, right ascension. 
And so we might have a star that's located at this point on the celestial sphere, and therefore it has a declination and it has a right ascension. You might wonder, what's zero right ascension? Well, it turns out it's a fairly arbitrary point in the sky called the first point in Aries. And technically, it's where the sun is in the sky uh, in, during the spring equinox, that point in the sky that the sun occupies uh, at, the, at the spring equinox is, uh, is a line of zero celestial longitude or zero right ascension. Now, we would like to use the concept of right ascension and declination in order to design a telescope mount that works for us very well. And that kind of telescope mount is called an equatorial mount, okay? So I have this pole here on this tripod, and that pole is pointing to a certain point on the celestial sphere. In fact, it's pointing toward the north celestial pole, which is the line of 90, which is the point of 90 degree declination. And that's where this pole is pointed at. And if I were to take my instrument and sort of mount it on the pole like this, my instrument could rotate about the pole and it can sort of move according to the right ascension axis. This is sort of right ascension here. Or it could move perpendicular to the right ascension and have declination. So when I move the telescope this way, I'm changing the declination or celestial latitude uh, that the telescope is pointing at. If I move this way, I'm changing the right ascension, which is the celestial longitude the telescope is pointing at. Now, when you do your Gavert scan, you're going, somebody, you or, or the operator is going to pick an object for you to, to scan, to look at, some kind of quasar. And they're going to do two scans. They're going to do a uh, declination scan, which is this way. And they're going to do a right ascension scan that's this way. They don't call it a right ascension scan. They call it a cross deck or X deck scan. But it's basically a scan in right ascension. And so you're going to sort of scan across your target this way, and you're going to scan across your target this way, and you're going to take the output of the telescope and do some analysis of it. I would like to do a very, very similar scan, but of the sun using this uh, telescope, this small itty bitty radio telescope. Uh, that's its official name. You can get plans for it on the internet. And I'm going to sort of manually scan in right ascension. And we're going to take some data. I'm not going to do a, a declination scan. I'm going to do a cross deck scan this way. Now, I could let the Earth's rotation do the scan for me. Because the Earth is rotating, all the stars appear to move in a clockwise fashion about the celestial, north celestial pole. And that also leads to stars that seem to rise in the east and set in the west. So if I were to point this telescope directly at the sun and wait, eventually the, the sun would move away from the telescope and the signal strength would go down. And so if I sort of just put the telescope here and let the sun move across it because of the Earth's rotation, I could let the Earth do the, the heavy lifting in uh, doing the scan. And often radio telescopes do use the rotation of the Earth to do a scan rather than little motors, at least in the uh, cross deck or right ascension mode. That takes a, a, bit of a, to a bit of a long time and I don't want to sit out here in the sun for, for 20 minutes and do a scan. Uh, so I'm going to manually scan it uh, just by moving the dish. Before we do our scan using this radio telescope, I'd like to give you a little tour of it. So it's mounted on a tripod, as you can see. And it has a big dish here that intercepts the microwave radiation from the sun and reflects that radiation to this antenna feed here. 
And there's a cable coming out of the antenna feed. That's this cable here that goes to a receiver box here. And there's another cable coming out of the receiver box and that goes to the power supply, which is right here. So I'm gonna turn that on. And you'll notice that you hear a little audio indication. This particular receiver will give a tone whose frequency is proportional to signal strength. So if I move this toward the sun, you'll hear that the frequency just went up. And notice that we got an indication on the meter. So this is away from the sun. This is toward the sun. And by looking at the signal strength that we're reading on this meter, we can figure out what the power output is of the sun in the microwave and in a portion of the microwave band. This uh, receiver is sensitive to microwaves around 12,000 megahertz or so. And the bandwidth of the receiver is 500 megahertz. So this receiver is only gonna be looking at a very narrow slice of the electromagnetic spectrum that is centered around 12,000 megahertz or so. So let's go ahead and begin the scan. Okay, here's a close-up of the signal strength meter. It reads from zero to 100%. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan the telescope manually in the cross deck or right ascension axis. And I want you to take baseline values and then a peak value and then the baseline value on the other side, okay? So here goes, I'm gonna kind of move this around. Notice there's an audio indication as well. And I wanna get just at the very beginning of where the signal drops off, which is right about there. So I want you to record the baseline value as a percentage. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan toward the sun and right ascension to its maximum. And it looks like the maximum is around 80%, but I'll let you record that. And now I'm going to keep scanning in the same direction and go back to the new baseline, which is pretty close to zero here, right about there, okay? Now the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of do this off camera, is I'm going to find the angle that the telescope is pointing at, at the beginning of the signal, when the signal starts to rise, and then I'm going to take the angle again uh, after the telescope has passed through its peak and has returned to baseline. And by subtracting these two angles, we're going to kind of get the angular beam width for this particular telescope, and you're going to need that for a calculation as well. But I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera.